Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about methionine metabolism. So methionine, methionine is an essential amino acid, which means that we need to get it from a dietary source. Now, in the process of methionine metabolism, methionine generates succinyl-CoA, and succinyl-CoA can be utilized in the TCA cycle to generate ATP. And here's just a brief overview of the methionine metabolism pathway. We see that methionine eventually uh, produces propionyl-CoA, which then will lead to methylmalonyl-CoA, which will eventually lead to succinyl-CoA. Now this is just a brief overview of the methionine metabolism pathway. We're going to discuss the methionine metabolism pathway in detail in the next slide. So I just want to briefly focus your attention on this portion of the methionine molecule. This part of the methionine molecule be, gets carried throughout the methionine metabolism pathway and this is the same portion of succinyl-CoA. So this portion of methionine is represented in succinyl-CoA. It gets carried along the methionine metabolism pathway and it is this portion of succinyl-CoA. Now the methionine metabolism pathway is unique in that it requires vitamin B12 and there are actually two enzymes in the methionine pathway that require vitamin B12 and we'll talk about those in the next slide as well. And the methionine metabolism pathway involves the activated methyl cycle and the activated methyl cycle has um, very important roles in many different processes and we'll also discuss that in the next slide. So we begin with methionine, and methionine can come from a dietary source like protein. Remember that it is an essential amino acid, and methionine is special in that it is one of only a few amino acids that contains sulfur in its structure. So if we want to start metabolizing methionine, we need an enzyme known as methionine adenosyl transferase. And this enzyme, what it essentially does is what its name suggests, it transfers an adenosine group onto methionine. And that adenosine group actually comes from ATP or adenosine triphosphate. So methionine adenosyl transferase takes the adenosine group from ATP, adds it to methionine to form S-adenosyl methionine or SAM. So here is the adenosine group right here. So this leads to this important molecule known as S-adenosylmethionine or SAM. So SAM is a very important molecule in that it becomes very important as a methyl donor. So as you see here, the methyl group in methionine and, and an S-adenosylmethionine are the same. So what happens is this adenosine group that gets added to the sulfur of methionine makes the sulfur and methyl bond unstable allowing SAM or s methionine to become a methyl donor. So that's what its purpose becomes. So SAM is involved in the synthesis of catecholamines, uh, nucleotides, melatonin, etc. We'll talk about this in another lesson but just remember that s methionine acts as a methyl donor for the synthesis of a variety of different things in our body including catecholamines, nucleotides, creatine, and melatonin. So the next thing we want to do in methionine metabolism is we want to process SAM by methyltransferase enzyme. And what this essentially does is it, it removes the methyl group, it adds it to another molecule. Uh, those molecules could be part of catecholamine synthesis, nucleotide synthesis, etc. And this leaves us with S-adenosyl homocysteine. So it's no longer, um, the methyl group is no longer attached to this sulfur group now. After that, S-adenosyl homocysteine can then be acted on by adenosyl homocysteinase. So what this does is it actually removes the adenosine group from homocysteine, leaving us with simply homocysteine. And homocysteine can then 
be acted on by an enzyme known as methionine synthase. And methionine synthase actually regenerates methionine from homocysteine. And in the process, it actually takes a 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, or THF, and converts that 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. It removes the 5-methyl group from tetrahydrofolate, and it forms tetrahydrofolate in this process. So this process uh, constitutes a cycle. And this, is, this cycle is actually known as the activated methyl cycle. This is what we utilize in uh, catecholamine synthesis, as I mentioned before, for um, when we need acetinazole methionine. But what's also important about this cycle is that it actually generates tetrahydrofolate or THF, and this is important in a variety of processes as well. So this portion of the pathway is known as the activated methyl cycle, and it is important to form two things. It's important to form acetinazole methionine, which can be used as a methyl donor for various processes, and it's also important in generating tetrahydrofolate, which is used in a variety of processes as well. And importantly, with regards to methionine synthase, it is one of the two enzymes in humans that requires vitamin B12. So again, this is extremely important for um, recycling of homocysteine into methionine. We need vitamin B12 for methionine synthase. Now, if our purpose is not simply to generate acetinazole methionine or tetrahydrofolate, and our purpose is to actually generate energy, homocysteine can be redirected out of the activated methyl cycle and acted on by the enzyme cystathionine beta synthase to form cystathionine. Now, cystathionine beta synthase requires an amino acid, serine, and what it does is it actually takes serine, the carbon, carbon backbone of serine, and essentially adds it to homocysteine to form cystathionine. In the process, it generates water. Now, cystathionine beta synthase requires vitamin B6. This is an enzyme that requires vitamin B6. Now, cystathionine itself can then be acted on by cystathionine gamma lyase to form alpha-ketobutyrate. And in this process, it takes water, it takes a water molecule, and it essentially chops off that additional carbon skeleton that we added before, and it gives us cysteine and an ammonium group. Now, alpha-ketobutyrate can then be acted on by alpha-ketoacid dehydrogenase to form propionyl-CoA. So in this process, it actually um, removes a carbon dioxide. It adds a, um, it adds a coenzyme A to form propionyl-CoA. And then propionyl-CoA can then be acted on by propionyl-CoA carboxylase to form methylmalonyl-CoA. In this process, requires ATP. So ATP gets hydrolyzed to ADP in this process, leading us to formation of methylmalonyl-CoA. And then methylmalonyl-CoA can then be acted on by the enzyme methylmalonyl-CoA mutase. And this is the second enzyme in humans that requires vitamin B12, methylmalonyl-CoA mutase. So methylmalonyl-CoA mutase requires vitamin B12. It acts on methylmalonyl-CoA to form succinyl-CoA. So again, the two enzymes in humans that requires vitamin B12 are methionine synthase, so methionine synthase here, and the second one is methylmalonyl-CoA mutase. Those are the two enzymes in humans that require vitamin B12. Now, once we have succinyl-CoA, remember that this portion of the methionine molecule is still the same portion of succinyl-CoA. These carbons and this oxygen are all still the same. Now, succinyl-CoA can then be directed into the TCA cycle and can be 
um, formed into other TCA cycle intermediates, fumarate, malate, oxaloacetate, etc., eventually leading to a formation of FADH2 and eventually ATP production. So this pathway is, in, is very important for several reasons. One is that methionine can be utilized to form a very important methyl donor, S-adenosylmethionine, in the activated methyl cycle. And we can then actually go through the activated methyl cycle and actually recycle our byproduct, homocysteine, back into methionine by methionine synthase. And we can also generate another important cofactor, tetrahydrofolate. So this cycle here represents the activated methyl cycle. Another important outcome of methionine metabolism, if we want ATP generation from methionine, the homocysteine from the activated methyl cycle can be redirected out of the activated methyl cycle and can eventually be processed into succinyl-CoA, which then can be rerouted into the TCA cycle for ATP production. And the last important point I want to mention is again, two enzymes in human humans that require vitamin B12 are methionine synthase and methylmalonyl-CoA mutase. Those are two important enzymes that we require for both the activated methyl cycle and also for completion of methionine metabolism to form succinyl-CoA. Anyways, guys, that was a lesson on methionine, methionine metabolism and the activated methyl cycle. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.